Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we have a vintage Dunhill Auto Roller Light Roller Petrol Lighter, which in actuality is a semi-automatic design. It does show scuffs, dings, some plating loss, maybe even a dent or two. We'll look at some of those particulars as we move through the video. It's a very cool old lighter though that you don't see all that many of. And I've had a little bit of trouble getting this one to function the way that I wanted it to. Where most lighters, you hit the roller, the lid's already up. This lighter, the roller mechanism, actuates the lid coming up when you work the roller. So, not only are you lighting the lighter when you roll it, but you are also lifting the lid, which means you have at least two things that you're trying to achieve. You can see the bottom is marked Dunhill, made in Switzerland and it has a really nifty fill screw that is hinged so that you do not need a screwdriver to fill your lighter up. You can see there I had a little bit of trouble with that flint. This lighter had not been fueled in some time. When I had fueled the lighter up and made the original video, well, I think that was probably over a year ago, it didn't have any problem lighting that I could remember, but it did occasionally not open the lid when you work the roller. So I decided to go ahead and replace the regular cheap eBay bought flint that I had in it with the actual Dunhill blue flints that I had bought on Amazon. And after I got that one grooved here, which is what you saw those last few strikes, it seems to work a little bit better. I don't know if the maybe the diameter of it might be a little bit better, maybe provide a few more sparks, but it seemed to work a little bit better. I still wouldn't have 100% confidence in this lighter as far as every time that you strike it, it opening the lid and lighting the the wick. I would put that at probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 percent where both of those things happen. It is a very clean lighter. I don't see anything functionally wrong with it. It does show scuffs, dings, the front two corners of the lid up there may have a ding or dent of sorts you can see uh, maybe one of the back corners as well the bottom appears to be missing some of its plating and that hinge on the fill screw makes that really handy to get that fill screw out of there you don't need a screwdriver or any other kind of tool you just fold that hinge up and it's got a little the hinge itself provides place for your fingers to grab a hold of it this is a very nice uh, fill screw for this Dunhill lighter as well you can see how deep it is how deep the threads go it appears that the gasket is still mostly intact it has the spare flint compartment which is cleaned out and in the video it still had one of the cheap eBay flints in it. Before I ship it I will include one of the Dunhill blue in that spare flint compartment so that when you get the lighter all you will need to do is add fuel. But you can see the gasket there or seal whatever you would call that seems to be still intact 
It's a very stout fuel screw. Definitely not like you would see in a lot of cheap Japanese lighters or some of the flip top flimsy type materials. This is definitely a step up from a lot of the lighters that I handle. And I'm not complaining about any of the lighters that I handle. I enjoy them all. They've all got an interesting history. Um, they've all got a legacy, even. Some still around. I don't know if Dunhill is actually still making lighters or not. I don't believe they are. But I don't know that for sure. Somebody can tell me that in the comments. You can see there on that front corner of the lid how it looks like it's taken a ding. And then on this one back left corner also, a little bit rounded off there or flat where it should have been more nuanced as the curve of that top turns into the side. I really like the thick ribbed design and the way that it goes not only on the front and back, and sides but also all over the lid so that the only part of the lighter that is not ribbed is the base as a silver tone file roller the hinge is very tight although it is a little bit canted to one side and it is very heavy in the hand you know people used to carry around rolls of coins to use during a fight. You could use this lighter for a purpose like that if you chose to. It's definitely a little bit heavier than the Penguin Cygnus that remind me so much of the Dunhill roll of light You can see there how that lid is canted to the side just a bit. And I think that probably has something to do with the latch. The way that the latch is worn over time. It's not a brand new lighter. It's definitely been used, but it hasn't taken major damage. And not only that, but it's really in nice cosmetic condition. I don't subscribe to the near mint and all that. That's just way too complicated for me. But it does show plating loss some. It is somewhat unreliable in the way that it lights and opens the lid at the same time. But the wick appears to be in good condition and that's not a problem. Uh, I don't think it was marked anywhere under the lid. My light in the room that I am currently filming there is not the best. I need to figure out an alternative to that but all in all like I said scuffs scratches dings wear minor plating loss some plating loss to the fuel screw and some unreliability in its function it's a very collectible lighter and if you are a collector of vintage cigarette lighters in general and do not own an auto roller light you need to check that off your list. Until next time.